Welcome to Comic Power. I am your host, Comic Killer 72. Today we're doing a new segment called the Quick Flip. In comic book investing terminology, the quick flip normally means you have something for a very short period of time that you sell for a profit and had no intention of holding it for the long term. At my channel, I'm going to incorporate the phrase quick flip and make it mean real down and dirty, real fast information about this channel and other comic book news and always under seven minutes. And we'll cover a lot of different topics in a short period of time. Okay, now that you understand, let's go ahead and get right into it. As I mentioned earlier, my new comic day report called Wicked Wednesday has been suspended. I got an outcry of support of people wishing for it to come back. If you want to know why I'm putting it on the shelf, then there's a video I made about that earlier. I'll put a link in the description. But I have no plans to bring back that program until this network hits 5,000 subscribers. And I've said it a million times and I'll say it again. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and share these videos all over social media where it's relevant. I listen to my audience. I listen to your feedback. But I had no choice other than to cut Wicked Wednesday for right now and concentrate on other programs. Speaking of other programs, you can find these in the playlist. If you go to my main homepage and you click on playlist, you'll see all these other programs that are broken down by a category. Get Your Popcorn Ready, for example, is about movie reviews. My archives of quick flips, they're in there as well. The Rumor Mill about who may be playing characters in future movies and television. And Casting Confirmations, which is pretty self-explanatory about who has been cast to play movie roles. And of course, Confirmed. There's also the Top List, which is numerous top five and top 10 lists in there. There's Artist Spotlight. There's three of them so far, John Watkiss, Adam Hughes and Frank Cho, but there's going to be more to come. That's just the tip of the iceberg. They're also in continuation. So if you pick on a category in the playlist, it will play them all back to back without stop. If you include this video, this is my 158th video. Only 100 of them are Wicked Wednesday. So I have some nice archives. I no longer do Wicked Wednesday, but if you are paying attention, you'll know that I promised that I would give a pick of the week going forward anyway. So you know what that means. Next up is the speculation pick of the week. This is my pick of the week for January 17th, 2018, and that's going to be Kill or Be Killed number 15 from Image Comics. This comic series gets a grade A from me. It was nominated for Eisner for Best New Series in 2016. It's the brainchild of the ongoing partnership between Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. They have a long history of these very dark film noir crime stories. In this one, the protagonist is a young man named Dylan who survives a suicide attempt. And after seeing a demonic monster, he decides to become a masked vigilante. Something like The Punisher meets Moon Knight. I advise you to go ahead and pick up some trade paperbacks so you can catch up to what's going on in this story. Issue number 15 is the start of a new story arc where he's got to confront the reality of his violent past plus his sanity. Kill Be Kill is dark and gripping and absolutely brilliant. And by the way, the runner-up pick of the week is Damage Number 1 by DC Comics. It's the monster within the man type of story, so think of it as DC's Hulk. Next, we have some controversy. Hollywood icon Jodie Foster is being hard on comic book movies. Jodie became a breakout star due to her portrayal as a teenage runaway prostitute in 1976's Taxi Driver. Opposite Robert De Niro, you talking to me? You talking to me? Great movie with Martin Scorsese directing. In 1990, she won an Oscar for playing Clarice in Silence of the Lambs opposite Anthony Hopkins, who also won an Oscar for playing Hannibal the Cannibal. It's very rare that the two leads get the top award in the same movie. Sir Hopkins is now playing Odin in the Thor movies. Well, he was playing, but he's dead now. But anyway, so with a resume like that, her words carry a lot of weight. And here's what she had to say. Quote, going to the movies has become like a theme park. Studios making bad content in the order to appeal to the masses and shareholders is like fracking. You get the best return right now, but you wreck the earth. And it ruins the viewing habits of the American population and then ultimately the rest of the world. End quote. So she is literally saying that comic book movies are bad for the earth. I mean, is she really serious? Okay, maybe she's right about movies like the Transformers because that's just god awful, but still keeps making billions of dollars, which is another story. But with the superhero movies, I think she's way off base. There was a lot of pushback to what she was saying, and the highest ranking person to reply was James Gunn, the director of the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise. And is it me, or does James Gunn look a lot like Clay Aiken from American Idol? Hmm, but that's another story. James Gunn's reply to Jodie Foster was, quote, I think Foster looks at film in an old-fashioned way. 
where spectacle film can't be thought provoking. It's often true, but not always. Most studio franchise films are somewhat soulless, but creating spectacle films that are innovative, humane, and thoughtful is what excites me about my job. Let me interpret what he just said. Jodie Foster, you're old. Shut up. Transformers may suck, but Guardians of the Galaxy does not suck. Thank you very much. I think the answer to this is for Marvel to cast Jodie Foster in a movie and it'll make her take back everything she said about comic book movies once she gets that big check. Let her play the mother of Captain Marvel or something like that. Here's a quick plug of my eBay page, by the way. I do sell comics out there. A lot of people didn't know that One Stop Thrift Shop and Comic Killer 72 are the same guy, but it is and I'm 100% feedback. And now for some good news. Marvel is moving towards development on a Black Widow project. Fans have been asking for this forever and Marvel has been reluctant until now. They haven't announced a official release date, but they have hired a screenwriter. Seeing more of Scarlett Johansson kicking ass in tight letter, I, I, I think I can get with that. Did you know that Scarlett Johansson used to be married to Ryan Reynolds and now that Deadpool is coming over to Marvel due to the Fox acquisition, could Deadpool actually meet Black Widow and reunite this couple? How awkward would that be anyway? They were married between 2008 and 2011, if you didn't know. My idea for a Black Widow movie would be what happened at Budapest, which they mentioned in the Avengers, the pre-Avengers mission that they were both involved in. You and I remember Budapest very differently. Scarlett is 33 years old in real life now, and she's getting up there in age, so I don't know if she's going to be able to play a prequel. If she's 35, playing a role that's supposed to be about 22, that's not going to look right. If they want to do a prequel, they could hire a much younger actress like this cosplay model. Recast Hawkeye as well and make it a Netflix miniseries. You know the drill. Subscribe to this channel, give it a thumbs up, and share it on social media so others can learn about comic power. Once again, thank you to all my subscribers and viewers. It only gets better from here.